today. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is a story about of how the Lord Jesus Christ is able to calm the storms of life. And I titled my message today, Peace in the Midst of the Storm. Now, someone said many years ago, I heard, that every one of us have just come from a storm or we're headed in a storm or we're in a storm. One of those three areas. And yet at the same time, we sometimes don't know how exactly how to handle the storms of life. There in Mark chapter 4, and you begin, if you would, take your Bibles and be turning there. And in verse 35, we're going to begin looking at this story. Very familiar story. Jesus had had a hard day. And the Bible says that he and his disciples got into the boat. And there they began to journey out into the sea of Galilee. And no doubt it was a very hard day because the Bible says that Jesus went and he went to the back of the boat and he put his head on a pillar and he went to sleep. Here you're going to see Jesus exercising a miracle a miracle in the realm of nature. We're in a series of messages on I believe in miracles, and we're looking at the different miracles that Jesus performed. This is one of the most amazing miracles because what Jesus did, he was able to have dominionship over the realm of nature. Now, if you'll go back and you study in the book of Genesis, you will find originally before sin ever came into the world that God had given man dominionship over nature. And so... When sin came into this world, it robbed man from that dominionship. But the Lord Jesus Christ, the God-man, coming on the scene, he's expressing and demonstrating what we should have been able to do before sin. And what does Jesus do? They're out there on the, on the Sea of Galilee. And there it seems like everything was going along normal. And then all of a sudden, a storm, a raging storm. Now, I don't want you to think that it was just a, a, a light little thunderstorm. I think it was like a hurricane that they were out there and the winds and the rain and the lightning and the thunder was billowing away. And the Bible says that these fishermen, these disciples, these seasoned men of the sea became afraid. Now, that begins to tell me something, that a man that who was seasoned as a fisherman, that who lived out on the sea, had seen many storms. But this storm was so horrendous that they were frightened for their lives. So that tells me it was not just a a usual storm, but it was a very unusual storm. And it came up all of a sudden. 
And yet I began to see that's the way life is a lot. All of a sudden you're just sailing along in this life. And all of a sudden you're faced with a storm. You don't know what to do. You become frightened. And you may even say that something like what the disciples said to the Lord. Like, where is he? He's asleep. Don't you care? In essence, that's what they were saying. Lord, don't you care that we're about to go under? You're here just sleeping away. Have you ever said that? <laughs> Lord, don't you care? Don't you care what I'm going through? Don't you care what I'm experiencing? Don't you care? Are you asleep? Well, there's some valuable lessons that I want to share with you this morning. So with your Bibles open, would you stand with me? And let's look at Mark chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading in verse 35. Now, I want you to notice this story. Listen, I want you to notice some certain words that is said here, especially the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, on the same day when evening had come, He said to them, let us, meaning that he's going to be with them, cross over to the other side. And when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And as other little boats were also with him, and a great windstorm arose, And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. In other words, the water was overflowing the helm of that boat, and there there was about to go under. He was in the stern, asleep on a pillar. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher! Do you not care that we're perishing? Mm. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Right there in the midst of the storm, Jesus commanded there to be peace. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Mm. Father, what a mighty, mighty Savior we have in the way that he demonstrated the power of Almighty God of calming the storm of the sea and bringing peace right there in the midst of the storm. Father, I may be talking to someone right now that is listening, that is going through a storm, could be storms of finances. Could be a storm 
of a rocky marriage. Could be a storm of a terrible business adventure. Could be a storm of sickness and suffering. And they look around and they wonder, where are you, Lord? But Lord, I pray that you will teach us just like you did the disciples of your mighty presence. And that you too would bring peace in the midst of the storm. So Lord, may the spirit of the living God speak and work through our lives and demonstrate his mighty power once again. And may it be for the one reason and one purpose only, and that is to bring glory and honor to our precious Savior. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. 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 Thank you. you. may be seated. I want you to notice three things here with me today as we look at this passage of Scripture. And I want you to notice of how it applies to us in such a very relevant way. First of all, I want you to notice with me the direction of the ship. Did you notice what the Scripture said? That as Jesus said to the disciples... And to these fishermen, let us go to the other side. In other words, he gave them a direction. The Bible talks about that many times that there a ship on the sea is compared to a journey of life. I remember what the Apostle Paul said one time as he said, my departure is at hand. There in Thessalonians. Referring to, of course, that there was a time that he was going to leave this side of eternity and venture out into the sea of eternity. Many times, life is compared to a journey on the, on the a voyage of the sea. You see it through and hear it through songs that people sing. You read it in scripture. You even see it in novels as people uh, talking about life is like a journey on the sea. And so, very much, that is the case here. And so, Jesus comes on board, and he tells his disciples, he says in verse 36, let us, not just you, he didn't command just them, but he talked about that he was going to be with them. He said, let us go to the other side. See, life is to have a sense of direction. He says, let us pass over to the other side. He didn't say, we're going out into the sea and go under. But he said, what? There's a destination. In spite of what you might experience on the way, you're going to the other side. So he says, let us. Now, I think it's interesting Jesus being a carpenter, that was his trade. He did not know very much about fishing or about the sea. But the Bible says that when he got on board, notice what they said. Master. And the word master could literally mean captain. He's going to be the captain of the ship. And so these disciples recognized that here is Jesus Christ 
being the master. And what that literally means, that he, was, he has come to take over. To come to take control. One of my favorite paintings, and you may have seen this painting, is a young man at the helm of the boat. And on the right behind him was the Lord Jesus Christ with his hand upon his shoulder. As if to say that he is guiding that individual as he begins to steer the boat of life. My friend, one of the greatest things that a person can do is to invite Jesus Christ to come on board of their boat, to come on board of their ship. And once he comes on board, he not only wants to be your Savior, but he wants to be the Lord of your life. He has the desire to come and to take control and to take over. I want you to know that I don't, that the scripture begins to teach us and remind us of, of where they were going. Heard about a little boy one time. He had, a, he had a rabbit, and he had sold it to a friend of his. And so he had put the little rabbit in a, a box, and he said that, I will bring the rabbit to you. So there on his bicycle, he puts the box underneath his arms, and there they takes off with the little pet rabbit to the place of where he had sold the rabbit to of of his friend. Well, he stops along the way, and he opens the lid, and when he opens the lid, the little rabbit jumps out, and he takes off. And that little boy looked at him and said, look at that dumb rabbit. He don't know where he's going. He he said, because I've got the address. (laughs) Well, you know, there's a lot of people today that they don't know where they're going. They're just sailing through life, and they don't have any particular destination. They don't know where they've come from. They don't know where they are. And they don't know where they're going. One of the greatest things that a man or a woman can discover is the will of God for their life. And by inviting him on board of your ship, he gives you a sense of direction. I know where I'm headed, my friend. And I hope you know where you're headed. That one day we're going to be with the Lord in glory. And that we're on a journey, a journey of life. And so it's so important that we know where we're going. But then I want you to notice also that They not only had a sense of direction, but they had a sense of destination. He said, let us pass over to the other side. See, the Lord Jesus Christ not only wants you to be your Savior, he wants to be your security. Now, my friend... One of the most important things you need to recognize when you're on that voyage of life is not only that Christ is in my life and that he is leading me, but that he is securing me. No matter what may come in my life, that I am secured in the arms of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's so important for us to realize this. I remember one time somebody told me or asked me the question. They said, Preacher, do you believe in the perseverance of the saints? I thought about that for a while, and then I thought, you know, I don't have a lot of confidence in the perseverance of the the saints. 
but I do have a lot of confidence in the perseverance of the Savior. And there's a big difference, my friend. If life depended upon me, man, I'm going to fall. And I'm going to fail. And I'm going to go under those waters of sufferings and waters that are threatening. But oh, how I'm so thankful to know that when Christ is in my life, that he is not only my Lord, my Savior, but he is my security. I am so grateful to think about of how the scripture teaches us of that security. One of the greatest illustrations in the Bible that talks about the security of the Lord is Noah. You think about Noah for a few moments. Noah, of course, no doubt probably had a rocky, rocky voyage there in that big ship and no doubt that voyage was so treacherous at times and probably to the point that Noah fell but I want to remind you something he always fell inside the boat he never did fall outside the boat Yes, life can be tough sometimes. And yes, storms can come raging and they become threatening. And we might stumble and we might fall. But my friend, when Christ is on your boat, he's got you secured. One of the greatest verses of Scripture that reminds me of that is in Hebrews chapter 6. And what it is, it talks about the securing of the anchor that is in the harbor. I want to read this passage of Scripture to you. We have it on screen. Listen to what he says. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast, and which enters into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered even Jesus. Let me give you the picture. Back in the days of Jesus, that many times the ship would come and they would come to the harbor and the tide would be out. And there would be a, a sandbar. And so the ship was not able to enter into the harbor. So what they would do, they would take the anchor. And they would take the anchor into the harbor. And there that anchor in the harbor connected to that ship. And when the tide began to rise, the ship would move on into the harbor. But many times when that anchor was in the harbor and that ship was outside the harbor, they would storms sometimes come up unexpectedly. But all oh, the fishermen, all, oh, they were confident that everything was going to be all right. Because the ship was anchored already into the harbor. My friend, I want you to understand, when the Lord Jesus Christ died, rose again, ascended into the heavens, he took your anchor, and there he put it into the harbor of heaven. And he is your anchor. And all, oh, friend, as we're journeying through life, no matter what kind of storm may come, my friend, I know that I am bound for that eternal kingdom called the kingdom of heaven because that's the harbor that I'm headed for. And friend, the 
Oh, how secure that we find ourselves in that way. But you know, I want you to see something else. I want you to see not only the direction of the ship, but let's look for a few moments of the disturbance of the storm. The Bible says in verse 37, and there arose a great storm of wind. Where is Jesus? He's in the back of the ship. He's asleep. Here are seasoned fishermen. And the Bible says they are so afraid. The winds are moaning like wild animals. The waves are dancing like a bunch of demons. Here, lightning is cracking like pistols going off. Life sometimes is difficult. Could we not all say that we have been in storms in the past? And sometimes we don't know what to do. I found it interesting. I was reading the USA Today, and they had an article talking about the tragedies that people experience. And they listed five of the top tragedies that people experience. They said, number one, the tragedy and the devastation of losing a mate. How devastating that could be. Number two, the tragedy of losing a child. How devastating that would be. The tragedy of losing a parent. How devastating that would be. And then fourthly, he talked about the tragedy of losing a, your household income all of a sudden. Or five, it went on as far to say a tragedy of losing your home. Now you stop and you think about, it. boy, there are great storms. And what was so interesting about the article that they went and interviewed many of the people that had experienced these things. And listen to what they said. It said 76% of those that had experienced some great tragedy in their life that previously they had had health-related troubles. 29% of them said that they had had previously financial difficulty. 26% of them said that they had family problems. And 22% said that they had had personal problems. What that told me was life is tough. Life is difficult. And that everybody, some way, some shape or form or another, goes through problems and goes through tragedies. How do you deal with it? Well, the Lord Jesus Christ shows us a couple things here. First of all, he talks about that storms of life come suddenly. He says in verse 37, there arose a great storm of wind as if that it came upon the scene in a split second. Isn't that the way that many storms happen? just happens all of a sudden. You've got to realize the setting of there on the Sea of Galilee. There's mountains all around the sea. 
And there's deep ravines in those mountains. They almost look like funnels. And what happens is, is that that cold air comes down through the midst of those ravines and hits the warm waters of that sea. And all of a sudden, the storm erupts. All of a sudden, you wake up in the middle of the night and the phone is ringing. And on the other end, you get a call that your dad just passed away. All of a sudden, you come home after work, a long, hard day, and you have a Dear John letter on the table that your mate has left you. All of a sudden, you go to the doctor thinking everything is fine, and they've run some tests, and he comes back and he says, you've got a brain tumor. All of a sudden, you find yourself in a storm when you least expect it. That's exactly what happened here. That's the way life seems to be. But I want you to notice something very important here. It says in verse In this verse, it says, There arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship. Matthew chapter 5, verse 45 said that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. None of us are exempt. The Bible says. The songwriter once said, Into every life some rain must fall. What kinds of storms that comes our way? Why are those storms coming in our life the way that they do? I think there are several reasons that we could look at. Some because of disobedience. Maybe the storm that you're experiencing is simply because that you're out of the will of the Lord. I'm reminded of old Jonah. You remember what God told Jonah to do? He told him to go one way and Jonah decided to go another way. Going along the sea of life thinking everything is going to be just fine. But what happened? God sent a storm. Simply because old Jonah was out of the will of God. And there a storm arose out of disobedience. Sometimes it's out of the storms because of discipline. Sometimes God is just Discipline us. In the book of Psalms, the Bible says, the psalmist said, Lord, your storm. In other words, he is saying, Lord, you've sent me this storm. Now, why did he send the storm? I remember one time hearing about a little boy. He was out on the shoreline of the lake and he had his little sailboat and as he was out there playing with the little sailboat on the edge of the lake there was a gust of wind that blew it out into the middle of that lake and the little boy began to cry and think how am I going to retrieve that little boat His big brother saw what's happening. And so all of a sudden, he picks up rocks and he begins to throw rocks at the little boat. And the little boy thought, 
Why are you throwing rocks at my boat? Stop throwing rocks. Little did he realize what he was doing was throwing rocks beyond the boat and it was causing ripples in the water that brought the boat back to its owner. Sometimes we go along in life and if we're not careful, we find ourselves drifting away from the Lord. And sometimes the Lord has to bring a storm to draw us back close to him. Sometimes it's disobedience. Sometimes it's discipline. Sometimes it's demonic. Now, I think it's interesting in verse 39, the language says, Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. In other words, you could read that passage of Scripture where it said, peace be still, as he muzzled the wind as if it was a roaring, vicious animal. He muzzled the storm. He bound the storm. Sometimes there are satanic attacks. My friend, I hope you realize that the devil is real and he's alive. And he has one ambition, and that is to destroy you. And there are times that Satan will attack us because he knows that God loves you so much and he has a plan for your life. So sometimes storms are demonic. But I want you to see something else here. I want you to notice the storm of life come up severely. The Bible says that the ship was full and it was literally creaking and cracking like it was going to go under. They don't know what to do. Have you ever felt that way? You don't know what to do. There are those of storms of suffering. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 23 says, There is sorrow on the sea. Someone said, Very often the wells of joy are dug by the spade of sorrow. Sometimes, There are storms of sorrow and storms of sin. Could you identify with this verse? Because of sin, I was sinking deep and far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. Sometimes those sorrows. But I want you to see most importantly in the closing moments of this hour. Not only the direction of the ship. I want you to see the deity of the Savior. Look at the sea tamer. I want you to see who's on board of the ship. Now, I want you to notice the Bible says that they were other boats. They were some that were following this one boat, but only one was on this boat, which was by the name of Jesus. And the Bible says there arose a great, A great storm. This is a beautiful picture of not only the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ, but also the humanity of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't understand that. I've studied this book 40 plus years. And it's hard to comprehend how 
can God and man come together? But you see it so beautiful here in this passage of Scripture. You see the humanity of Jesus. He's got his head on a pillow asleep. You see the deity of Jesus as he stands and he, with authority, he hushes the wind. The fusing of the deity and the humanity of Jesus so well portrayed here in this passage of Scripture. But yet his deity was not apparent to these people, to these disciples. They're all shook up. Why, you would think God himself in the boat certainly can handle the storms of the sea. But they did not see it. I want you to notice that Jesus was not awakened by the fury of the sea. He was awakened by the frenzy of the disciples. They came and they shook him up. Master, carest thou not that we perish? Hamid translated this way. Are we to drown for all you care? Are we to drown? Lord, don't you care? You ever come to that point and you say, Lord, are you asleep? Do you really love me the way that you say that you do? If you do, why do you allow things like this to happen? There's two passages of scriptures I want you to jot down. Because if you have not come to that point and place in your life, you will one day. And when you do, you need to turn to these two verses of Scripture. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 says, Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting all your cares upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. But then I want you to write this passage of Scripture down. Psalms 55, verse 22. Listen to what the psalmist said. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall, what? Sustain thee. He didn't say he had sustained the burden, but he'd sustained you. That passage of Scripture came home to me one time many, many, many years ago when we were living in Lancaster, South Carolina. We had a two-story home. And Sean was a little fella, and uh, he was uh, going up the steps with a uh, high chair. And I happened to notice as he was going up the steps with all of his strength, And with all of his might, he just couldn't quite get that high chair up those steps. It was a burden. So you know what I did? I went over, and I didn't just pick up the high chair, but I picked him and the high chair. And I picked them up, and carried them to the top of the stair. That's the way the Lord works in our lives today. That sometimes he sees us struggling. Sometimes he sees us climbing, and yet with all of our might and all of our strength and all that's within us, 
We just can't quite make it to the top. That he comes and he sustains us. He picks us up with loving arms. And he takes us in the burden and carries us to the top. But why did they, or the deity was not apparent to these disciples? It says in verse 40, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? See, what Jesus was saying, you can't have fear and faith at the same time. They had fear and they had no faith. Fear and faith will not reside in the same heart. And you have to decide which one. But oh, friend, I want you to understand, here was the Lord Jesus Christ being sympathetic because his deity was absolutely sufficient. It says in verse 39, he arose. Now I want you to see the contrast of this. It says in verse 37, there arose a great storm. And then the Bible says, then he arose. There arose a storm, and then he arose. I'd a whole lot rather be in the storm with Jesus than to be in the calm without him. There was one time, many, many, many years ago, there was this couple, and they were on a cruise, and they were sailing. And all of a sudden, a storm came up. And the lady was so afraid. But the gentleman, her husband, he was calm as a cucumber. He wasn't afraid at all. And she apparently got upset because he was not upset. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, he did something. He pulls out a sword and he takes that sword and he puts it at the bottom of her neck. And all of a sudden she just smiled. He said, aren't you afraid? She said, I will never be afraid when the sword is in the hands of the one that loves me. I'll never be afraid of the storm when it's in the hands of the one who loves me. Think about it. Here is omnipotence. What is a puddle of water? Here is omnipotence. What is a spray of wind? Here is almighty God. What is in comparison to him? Why be afraid? His deity, he's on board of the ship. I want to ask you a question today. Is he on board of your ship? Have you ever invited him to come and say, Lord, I want you to be on the voyage of my life? Have you ever given him the helm of the boat and say, Lord, I want you to take control and no matter what that comes up, I know that you've got everything under control. Greatest decision you will ever make. These disciples learned a lesson that they never, ever forgot. That's why God sometimes 
allows some of these storms is to teach us things about him that we would never know had it not been for that storm.